Okay, question number 25 on your final exam review. I'm giving you a rational function, and I want you to find a formula for its inverse, f inverse of x. Now, one of the things you should always make sure of is the function that you're given to start with needs to be one-to-one. -one. In other words, it's a function, so it passed the vertical line test, but it also needs to pass the horizontal line test. But this rational function does, which means that you can find a formula for f inverse. Now, basically, finding a formula for an inverse function is a three-step process. Step one, I've taught my students to write down the original formula containing x and y. So instead of f of x, we're going to write y equals, and then of course we have x minus 7 over 5x plus 2. That is my original function. Now, step 2 is to find start finding a formula for the inverse function. And the first part of that is actually very easy, and we'll just call that whole thing step two. You're going to take the original function, and to find the inverse function, you're going to interchange the x's and y's. For example, if it used to say y, it now says x, and if it, used to, if it said x, it now says y. So my inverse will be written as x equals y minus 7 divided by 5y plus 2. Now, technically, this is the inverse formula. But the reason we don't want to stop there, and this is what we need to do in step number 3, we need to take the equation that we just created, which is actually the inverse. And from that equation, we are going to find inverse, the inverse formula, by solving that equation for y and calling it f inverse of x. OK, so let me go to the next piece of paper. Here we are. OK, so I have x equals y minus 7 divided by 5y plus 2. And I need to solve that equation for y. And that y will really be f inverse. Now, the way we're going to do that, I teach my students anytime there's an equation you're solving, and it contains fractions to clear the fractions. So in this case, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation through by the LCD, which happens to be 5y plus 2. On the left-hand side of the equation, when I distribute the x, 5y times x is 5xy. 2 times x is a positive 2x. So this is what we have on the left side. On the right-hand side, the whole point for using the LCD, those are gone now, so we just have a y minus 7. I meant to cross these 7s. I like to do that to differentiate them from y's or 1's or 2's or whatever. Okay, now, we have an equation that we're trying to solve for y. In order to do that, I need to get all my y's on the same side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide to take all the terms containing y to the left and all the others to the right. So I'm going to leave 5xy where it is. This I'm going to get rid of, well, move over back, basically. Group it with its friends by subtracting it. On the other side of the equation, I have the negative 7 that's already there, and then the 2x is going to come over, of course, appearing as negative 2x. Now, my y terms are together. My non-y terms are together. The reason I get my y terms together 
is so that I can factor out a y. When I do that, I have y times the quantity, 5x minus 1. That's equal to negative 7 minus 2x. And of course, to finish, to get y alone, it's almost alone. But we need to finish by dividing both sides of the equation by the quantity 5x minus 1. And I have y is equal to, I'm going to write the top as a negative, well, the opposite of 2x minus 7. I'm going to write the bottom as 5x minus 1. This is already in lowest terms. And the only thing I'm going to do to finish, y is actually f inverse. So we're going to write that as f inverse of x is equal to the opposite of 2x minus 7 divided by the quantity 5x minus 1. And voila. Do you agree, Miss Beth? I definitely. Do, same as <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I have that on tape. <laughs>